doing with dead victims' bodies. These looters have been entering into hurricane victims' homes and stealing whatever they can get their hands on. These disgusting humans have no regard for anyone and that was proven after what these looters did in one hurricane victim's home. On the best side of that coin, we see neighbor helping neighbor rebuild their homes, seek shelter, or open their doors for the less fortunate. Now, of course, if that was not disgusting enough one group thugs sank even lower by looting one woman's home who had died from Harvey's floodwaters. 90-year-old Agnes Stanley was stubborn and wanted to ride out Hurricane Harvey in her own home despite what others people warning her to leave. The elderly woman was found floating face down in around four feet of water, and if that was not horrific enough realizing that looters went into her home and burglarized makes it even worse. Agnes Stanley died in her home after flood waters rose quickly in this Houston neighborhood. One woman tells me she swam through 10 feet of flood water and broke into this home trying to check on her elderly neighbor. Michelle Potch is a trained paramedic and was quick to act when her home and others on May Ironwood Drive started taking on water. The Harris County Medical Examiner confirms a total of 29 storm-related deaths, and they expect there will be more as the waters start to recede and families are able to get back into their homes. Law enforcement said that Stanley's home was one of many that were targeted by looters in the area. Hopefully, the looters that broke into Agnes Stanley's home will be caught so that they can face justice for their nasty act. Hateful Kpernik loses it in huge public tantrum, here's shocking reason he went into a fit. If you've been following the drama of the career of Colin Kpernik, you know that he's had a few bumps in the road lately. As absurd as that might seem, many have jumped on board with him, but none of his fellow players have suffered the same career setbacks as Kpernik. Kpernik wants to paint himself as a victim, but according to one former coach, he's not playing football right now because he's just not a good enough football player. The former 49ers coach talked to the score about what might be holding Kpernik back. Steve Logan, Kpernik's quarterback coach in 2015, says he likes the quarterback as a person, calling him a good kid, but that the pivot's success is dependent upon playing in a run-based scheme. It has everything to do with his ability to play in the pocket, Logan told 99.9 .9 FM The Fan about Kpernik's lack of a job according to pro football talk Darren Gant. Logan didn't give Kpernik much credit, comparing his descent from Super Bowl starter to unwanted free agent to Blake Bortles becoming a borderline starter after his 35-touchdown season in 2015. This just gets better and better. It's crossed many people's minds that maybe Kpernik's inability to land a place on a team was more than just his political leanings. It's a very ignorant statement that if you don't agree with what's going on here and that if you want justice and liberty and freedom for all you should leave the country, Kpernik said. On the surface of the argument, Kpernik comes across as the humanitarian warrior for social equality and justice. When Kpernik talks about social injustice and people of color, is he talking about his own experience in the context of his former multi-million dollar salary and personal assets? America has been very, very good to Colin Kpernik and to many other high-profile people of color. Kpernik accuses Trump of being guilty of broad historical ignorance. To me, as a patriot, Kpernik's actions are despicable, but you've got to admit that as a PR move his kneeling was one of the best things that he could have done for himself. Cyclib's force investigation into Trump after seeing what his new hat says that wasn't MAGA. President Trump could cure cancer and the liberals in the mainstream media would accuse him of being biased against the disease. For liberals who can't seem to win when it comes to hating our dear president and first lady, the hats came across as tone deaf considering the state of emergency caused by Hurricane Harvey. Let's take their messiah former President Barack Hussein Obama as an example. The former president amazingly managed to increase his net worth by a whopping 438% over just eight years, 
since he first ran for office back in 2007. How did these two charlatans manage to gather so much wealth? The president makes $400,000 per year and the first lady makes nothing. Newsweek reports, there are valid reasons to be concerned by a president's earnings, including after their tenure in the Oval Office. How could it be that Obama, the smooth-talking Democratic candidate in 2008 who slammed Wall Street greed and resonated with the working class in a way his party has since been unable to authentically recreate, is living his post-presidential life like an elitist one-percenter. Obama will receive an annual pension of over $200,000, after vetoing a bill passed by Congress in 2016 that would have capped each former president's pension to that threshold. Virtually every single president in modern American history has earned serious cash following their time in office. We struggled to piece together the resources for mortgages for houses, for Chelsea's education. It was not easy. The Clintons, as well as former President George W. Bush, earn millions following their time in the People's House, receiving six-figure checks for Wall Street speeches and book tours. The Obamas are set to earn an unprecedented post-presidency income, and it's alarming his critics, supporters and other Democrats alike. The influence of money, I describe it as a snake that slithers through Washington. But don't take her word for it. Obama once told his supporters he wasn't tied up in corporate interests or the snake-like stronghold bankers and investment firms seem to have over many elected officials in the U.S. I did not run for office to be helping out a bunch of fat cat bankers on Wall Street, Obama said in 2009. Yeah, liberal media, let's worry about what kind of hat the president wore and what kind of shoes the first lady sported while boarding Air Force One. It's official. Here's who will be completely eliminated by February 2018. We're talking, of course about the DACA program that allowed almost one million illegals to be grandfathered into temporary citizenship because they illegally entered the country as children. The ending of the DACA means that the Dreamers will be headed back to their country of origin pronto. The Department of Homeland Security formally rescinded the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program, known as DACA, with a six-month delay for current recipients. The executive branch, through DACA, deliberately sought to achieve what the legislative branch specifically refused to authorize on multiple occasions, Sessions said, blaming the policy for the recent surge at the border. During the 2016 presidential campaign, Trump had promised to terminate DACA, though he appeared to soften his stance since taking office. Congress, get ready to do your job, DACA. Trump tweeted Tuesday morning. While some Republicans support the goals of the DACA program, many oppose the use of executive action to institute it, describing the move as a presidential overreach. During the presidential campaign, Trump referred to DACA as illegal amnesty. However, he seemed to edge away from that stance in April when he told the Associated Press that DACA recipients could rest easy. The DACA program was formed through executive action by former President Barack Obama in 2012, allowing recipients to get a deportation reprieve, and work permits, for a two-year period subject to renewal. Under the program, Individuals were able to request DACA status if they were under the age of 31 on June 15, 2012, came to the U.S. before turning 16 and have continuously lived in the country since June 15, 2007. Prepare yourself, there will be sob story after sob story about the DACA dreamers who've come to the United States and made good, or done good things for others while they were here. What's funny is, Obama himself said that DACA was temporary and not a path to citizenship or amnesty. Let's just assume, for the sake of argument, that those are the only people who are staying here under DACA. The question that we have to ask ourselves is why are they here? The most obvious answer is that these 800,000 people are here to make their own lives better. It's official. 
Donald and Melania just made big announcement about Baron after months of rumors. Among the torrent of slander thrown around about a child who has done nothing to deserve such hate, there's one rumor which has lingered for several months now that Baron Trump's parents have just made an announcement about. There's been a lot of speculation about Barron's new life in Washington, D.C., after he spent the first few months of his father's presidency at his original home in New York City. Melania Trump's first priority is rightfully on her son's well-being and now it seems she's made another incredible decision with attention to what's best for him. School is back in session and Barron began the sixth grade today. While other presidents' children went through grade school while their father was in office, Trump's son will be the first to attend classes where he showed up for his first day today. Baron Trump, the 11-year-old son of President Donald Trump and First Lady Melania Trump, will attend the private St. Andrew's Episcopal School in Potomac, Maryland, the Chicago Tribune reported. The White House had planned to hold off until summer to make the announcement in part because of concern that St. Andrews might become the site of protests while school was still in session. But parents began to ask questions and express security concerns as rumors surfaced, and school leaders decided to tell their community on Monday in a letter, the Tribune's report continued. Melania isn't just closely involved in her son's life, she's also hands-on with his new school. After choosing St. Andrews Melania put out the following statement, We are very excited for our son to attend St. Andrews Episcopal School. It is known for its diverse community and commitment to academic excellence. The mission of St. Andrews is to know and inspire each child in an inclusive community dedicated to exceptional teaching, learning, and service, all of which appealed to our family. We look forward to the coming school years at St. Andrews. Barron comes from a family with impressive educational backgrounds and is following in the footsteps of his adult siblings already. His education, development, and overall happiness are so important to his hands-on mom that she personally picked out the best school for Barron, rather than simply sending him to where other presidents' kids have always gone. The first time he made history was when he moved into the White House as the first first son to live there since 1963 when John F. Kennedy was president and his junior was a toddler. The sky is the limit for this sixth grader, with parents like his and the awesome education he's going to get at his new school he will hopefully have an awesome experience.